So there's a 270% chance of a stock market crash happening right now, ladies and gentlemen. And don't forget to turn your clock back to 2% interest rates and 1.8 cent gas on Tuesday. If you guys enjoy that, hit the like button down below. Happy Tuesday. It is election day and the markets are basically pricing every beautiful conclusion in. We're going to be talking about politics today because guess what? I can I don't really care. And yeah, that's what's going to happen. So markets, you guys come here to know what's going on with the markets. Simply put, the markets aren't liking what they're seeing. We did expect Apple to sell off. It didn't actually sell off too bad considering. But looking at the major uh, things with Apple, you're below the 250 day moving average. And now you're heading to that 200. Again, Apple is holding this area right here. And if you're an Apple holder, I do think that maybe it's time to get out. But we'll to dive more into Apple in just a second second but meme culture is going through the roof especially with with palantir stock obviously up a massive percent in after hours 12.51 percent meme culture is back so are we going to see the return of the memes the trolls and everything we also got elon musk on joe rogan's show i will link that at the end card video for you guys and also in the description below if you want to go check it out just because He's the greatest troll ever, and it's absolutely fun listening to Elon just talk about random crap on the internet. But again, the markets, I'm not saying you're they're pricing something in, but just looking at this, I'm basically saying that markets aren't necessarily happy. Now, if you're expecting hunky-dory and everything, right, what has systematically changed? As traders, we have to systematically analyze what has changed over the last period of the news. Well, simply put, everything just magically stopped going up and then weird question is why is bad news bad now good news good right we, we're going to share a lot of news today with you and we're going to be talking about various different things as we covered in the last video uh warren buffett selling everything pretty much 300 billion 350 billion in cash holding more than the federal reserve and speaking of the good old federal reserve reverse repo still maintains this low that it previously maintained uh, about 20 billion dollars up but we're expecting fluctuation I will guys keep you posted of this and why this is important is because this is basically the Fed's piggy bank before everything goes kaput. And if we jump over to yields today, before we get on to all the fun politics today, we can clearly see the two years still holding strong, expecting interest rates and true rates to stay elevated. If you were thinking that uh, a certain someone was going to win, right, and Jerome Powell was going to cut rates, well, why wouldn't you be down at the 3.8%? Remember, the bond market is a front running thing. So if the trillion dollar markets are not pricing that in, it naturally begs the question of who's going to win. Throw it down in the comment section below who you think is going to win, how it's going to turn out. But bonds were on a bit of a tear today, and it wasn't the greatest for bonds. But if you look in the grand scheme of things, it is a massive uptrend. The markets are basically saying inflation is not done. The fight is not done. There's going to be an extreme amount of turmoil. I want to be protected against that. Now, if Kamala were to win, basically, I'd be expecting these things to go down because you're just going to get your beautiful rate cuts as the Federal Reserve has told you and promised you and basically sold you this pig in the poke of rate cuts, rate cuts, rate cuts, rate cuts, rate cuts. Right now, we're expecting a 99.7% rate cut of 25 basis points. I'm personally saying you're going to get 50 just because the previous job market, Powell will pivot to that, especially as we discussed in the week in deep dive. The link in the description below as well, where we gave out all the levels we're going to talk about in this video. We gave you an analysis of how we got to those levels. We covered Bitcoin. We gave you your thoughts. Biggest winners and losers. Jam-packed video for you guys. So go check it out. Make sure you check out the Warren Buffett video. I will have everything linked in the description below. And while you guys are down there, if you guys wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe button and having bell notifications on, thank you so much for that. You're all wonderful, amazing people. But going back to what happened today, let's jump over to the economical news. Well, first of all, it wasn't all rosy pictures like we always publish in economical news. Huh, I wonder why that is, because maybe a certain someone's going to get into office. Now, stay tuned. We're going to be talking about a lot of bad news today. So factory orders negative 0.5, revised previously factory orders of negative 2 to negative 0.8. 
Well, it's like a certain someone's about to get back into office and we need to basically handicap them because guess what? That's what we do. This is what the elites do. And the other thing, for all those that are super, super blackpilled, uh, and my partner included, he's going to lose that bet and he just realized today what he owes me. Um, make sure you guys tune in for the live stream to see PA go red and my partner owe me a very, very expensive bottle of whiskey because he made that wager and I have proof of it on the stream along with the weekend deep dive if I'm admitting to it. So again, before I digress and run off into a tangent, I want to bring your attention. Democrats expect a near complete North Carolina and Georgia result on Tuesday night. Why would we, um, why would we expect that? Oh yeah, it's because you can't fortify those states. So Georgia and North Carolina off the table. So let's jump to the election map real quick. But before we do that, if it, if this wasn't uh, gaslighting enough for you, right? Let's jump back over to see crude prices because everyone loves their crude. And I did mention to you, I would not be surprised if crude became a bullish again. It's looking short-term bullish right now, especially that strong move above the 50. Let's see if it holds. Let's see who gets gets into the election, let's see how the election plays out, and crude could be a volatile asset and an indication of various things. However, it's going to be very, very interesting, especially with OPEC pushing out their production increase to the end of the year, as we covered in the weekend deep dive. But jumping back over to all the fun news now. now. Now's the glorious five minutes of fun, fame, and fortune. First of all, fear and greed. Got, I got to love the fearful are back. It was so easy to punch out all these bears and uh, sorry, punch out all these bulls. And I told you this was going to happen. I went back to net speculative positions and showed you guys how we're 62,000 positions positive. There's only one camp to reap the money from. All the shorts have gone out of the market because they're basically like, we want no part of this. And it just shows there's only one team to take money from. So guess what? That's the bulls and the market's coming for you like it came for the bears. And guess what? Why would that natural market steal money from the bulls if a certain someone was getting in? Just saying, you know, throw your comments down below what you think. Also, if that wasn't bad enough news, official CNBS delinquencies rate spiked to 9.4% high since worst months after the financial crisis. It's like a certain someone's about to get in. Huh. Anyway, but, you know, I can't predict the election, but I can just look at this simple graph and look at, huh, financial crisis 7%. We're at 9.4. And you're publishing all the bad news before the election. Yeah, I gotta say, guys, and this is my prediction for the election. Let's, let's do a little fun game, right? So we talked about Georgia and North Carolina. I think that is a clean, I don't think that you're gonna get any fortification in those states. Next, Nevada, I think, is a very easy pickoff. So we're already at 257 to 226. Now's where the interesting comes in, and this is where my theory diverges from a lot of people. I think Virginia is in play. I think the Gold Star family comment that Kamala Harris made is going to land her in a pickle. Now, let's say you don't get Virginia, right? We're already at 270. Congratulations, election is over. So that's scenario number one. Now, I'm going to give you guys what my prediction is, right? Let's say Virginia goes blue, right? Stays blue like it always has. I think, and this is not to uh, slander the religion, but it's a very honor-based religion. Uh, the Muslim religion is very uh, set in its ways. And you cannot just make random wishy-washy statements. And because there's a large Muslim population in these two states, along with the automotive workers that have spent the last four years looking their jobs disintegrate, it's they're going to remember this going to the polls, and it's going to be very hard for them to basically vote against their own interests on top of the religious creed aspect in these two states that have high Muslim populations, especially with Kamala Harris's wishy-washiness. And moments ago, literally two days ago, she made comments that we must stand with Israel. That's not going to go over well after you promise these people that you would push for peace in the Middle East. So again, this is why I'm saying that these Wisconsin and Michigan are going to go red. Guess what? You don't need Pennsylvania or Arizona. They can, You can count your votes till the end of time if that happens. I think 
that the Israel conflict is going to be the Grim Reaper and knocks on Kamala Harris's door. Make sure you guys tune in for the stream to know if I'm right, I'm full of crap. Just throw in the comment section what you think. I'm really genuinely curious to see what your thoughts are. But ask yourself this question. Why would all of a sudden eight months of perfect dandy news as the aggregates started to change all of a sudden we got job revisions maybe we're not getting as many rate cuts now delinquency is going up real pc numbers negative labor market numbers it's like someone's gonna get into office they don't like and they need to prep for it because i've been screaming like the top of my lungs that this yield curve inversion is going to rip everyone's face off regardless of who's in office so guess what there's a 270 percent chance of a crash coming to a neighborhood near you because this thing is bigger than any single individual. Now, do I think under a Trump regime that we would be getting a better pillow? Yes, soft landing as a recession, possible, not depression. Kamala, you may as well just kiss freedom and the country goodbye. Now, this is where I'm gonna give you my election results and then we'll conclude today. So thank you all so much for watching towards the end. I hope to see you guys in the live stream. We're gonna start around 9 p.m. Eastern once a lot of these polling results have been coming in, right? So we can kind of see the exit poll and give you analysis on that. We're gonna be trying to stay up as much as possible and keep you guys updated on the election. And we're gonna be talking about futures, right? Make money while watching the election. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. So Wisconsin, Michigan, Arizona, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. That is what I personally think is going to be the slaughter of 325 versus 213. This is just my personal opinion. I think, again, like I said in the beginning of the video, don't forget to turn your clocks back to 2% interest rates and $1.8 gas on Tuesday because Drill Baby Drill is coming back and a booming economy as well. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Hope to see you in the live stream. Throw down in the comment section below what you thought of this meme. Hopefully I brought some joy to your day. Make sure you guys, if you have not voted, go out and vote. Polling places close at 7 p.m. So make sure you guys go out and vote because if you complain afterwards and you didn't vote, it's your own doing. And I will also link the Joe Rogan, Elon Musk video because guess what? Everyone loves a troll, everyone loves Elon, and that was just a fun, fun video to watch. So make sure you guys check it out over here. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you in the live stream.